Thank you so much, my friends, for taking time to click on this video. And I just want to thank you as well for subscribing, for liking, for sharing, and for joining Melville Broadcasting Network as we spread the everlasting gospel to the ends of the world. I also just want to thank you for the blessing of resources that God has given you, which you have shared with us. As I've always said, and I want to say again, Melvis' work continues to grow in leaps and bounds, and our gospel footprint has gone around the world. It is for that reason, my friends, that we need more resources to keep this ministry growing and impacting more people, changing lives along the way. I don't want to spend a lot of your time, but I want to come back at the end of this video to share with you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that I'm hoping you can join us to bring it to pass because I believe and I feel it, my friends, that God is calling you and us to do something that will impact this world forever. So in the meantime, I just want you to relax, whisper a prayer to God, and enjoy this video. I'll see you on the end of this video. Stay tuned and God bless. Welcome to Melvid Talks, uh, where I get to chat with uh, my father, my uncle, the producer of Melvid Production. This particular session is a bittersweet moment for us, uh, the team, uh, us and everyone in this, in this room, in the studio. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sweet, it's sad, yeah, it's just mixed emotions. Um, yeah. Where we are celebrating the life of um, our father, uh, your brother, your friend, our pastor, our elder, everyone. Mm. He had a title for everything literally evangelist um, mm. uh, Noel Mashoshe. Uh, I cringe saying Noel Mashoshe because he's a father to me. Uh, but uh, I'd like to address him properly. Um, oof, yeah, uh, words fail me. Uh, mm. We decided not to even write anything. We decided not to even have a script for this one yeah. uh, because we really just want to speak from the heart more than anything. Mm. Um, hi, Uncle Mel. Yeah, Jeff. What's up? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. I'm and how good. are you? No, I'm good. I'm good. You, you forgot to tell our viewers that you just put the ring on ah, your finger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be seeing a lot of this uh, today. <laughs> I'm going to be using my left hand yes, today. So, um, congratulations. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you and Noma all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to have a chat about our our dad. Yes. Uh, Mr. Maxwell um, Schrader. Mm. Maybe let's start off by saying how did you meet him? Thank you so much and uh, greetings to all our viewers and our subscribers to the Masochero family and yeah. all those who follow this ministry. Yeah. Uh, it's really a very difficult moment for all of us. Yeah. But uh, I think I met him way back, man. Way back, before I even got married. Yeah. I was a university student at the University of Zimbabwe. Okay, that was a long time ago. In the 90s, late, late 90s, <laughs> yes, I, I, in the late 90s, so I think it was 1996 or 97, there mm. about. We had started this youth movement we called Adventist Youth on a Mission, IOM. Okay. Yeah, so it was a coming together of youths from Harare Federation. All right. Who had gone to the 1996 youth excursion in Vumba. Okay. With the likes of the late Michael Chugogora, with Pastor Mackenzie Kambizi, with Israel Mutema being the key speakers there. And one of our campers, uh, I think it was Ed Moore, he had just lost his father. And the experience was that he was not going to go back to write his exams because okay. there was no money anymore. The father had passed away. And so the youth felt, no, man, it can't be. We are university students, we have university grants, some of us are working, let's pay for his fees. And when we got back to Arare, we then organized ourselves into this and we said, no, you know, we're not going to help Ed more alone. We actually have many other people we need to help. We have many places we can visit and offer our hands and the little resources we have. Mm. So it was during one of the meetings with IOM. And uh, we were then collaborating, I think, a bit later on with Mrs. Jeremiah, okay. Gladys Jeremiah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. She also rested in 2019. Oh. Gladys Jeremiah was the sister to Elder Masoche. Yes. So he visited Harare 
and we so happened to be with Mrs. Jeremiah in one of our meetings. And so when he passed by, hello, buddy, hello, sissy, and, you know, met this graceful, eloquent man who had presence. Extremely eloquent. <laughs> yes. So he had been visiting, and then as, as they were talking, Mrs. Jeremiah then says, buddy, you need to talk to these young people. Inspire them. You are the one in the mission field. So he, he then agreed to just give us that motivational or devotional speech. And I listened and I, I don't remember everything he said that day, but I remember the impression mm. he left in me as a young university student. And I said, wow, this man sounds so eloquent. Mm. And he's on point in terms mm. of mission work. I was quite inspired. So that was the first time I met him. And I think that was around about 1997, thereabout. Okay. Yeah. So I had a, yeah, I've, I've known him since, uh, since probably since I was a kid. Mm. Um, him and my dad uh, literally used to call each other brother. All right. So he was Bamkuru, you know. Yes. Um, so he, yes. Was, he was a strong uncle. Uh, his sons, uh, we literally grew up together. Daniel, uh, Derek, and David. David, Daniel, and Derek. I think so. it's David, Daniel, Daniel and, and Derek. Derek. Yes, 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 yes. So we were always in each other's spaces, you know, mm. as we grew. They went to Gweru, we were still in Arare, but they would always, and then I know uh, Derek and I, yeah. uh, we were little groomsmen, little, the little groomsmen from All my right. uncle's wedding. All right. Uh, I think we also actually liked the same girl, but you know, we were always... <laughs> <laughs> we were always in each other's spaces uh, right. with even uncle and when when we then then came to south africa when he came you yeah. know f you, you you're very right he was direct in what he wanted to do you know uh, mm. with preaching his sermon was the same it was in different facets but it yeah. always ended to be the same one yeah. um so maybe let's have a let's have a clip uh, let's have a few clips mm -hmm. uh, just remembering him um and uh and just remember his face and just uh, enjoy. Yeah. Uh, viewers, please uh, enjoy the little clips that we have tried to sum up from our gallery and enjoy. So we've decided to call this series The Everlasting Gospel. Yes. What comes into your mind when you hear that phrase, The Everlasting Gospel? And maybe for our viewers out there. Well, it, 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 we need to understand, like we say, the terms of reference. Mm -hmm. Everlasting means that's the way things are. Mm -hmm. And when God is talking to, to Moses, he says, I am. Who I am. I am who I am. Mm. So we're not going to change God. Mm. And we're not going to change the everlasting gospel. All right. Okay, so those are not changing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord Jesus Christ comes and says, before Ab Abraham was, I, I am. am. Mm. Meaning, this is not going to change either. Mm. And the Apostle Paul says, Jesus Christ, the same yeah. yesterday, today, and, and forever. forever. Right. Yeah. So we we are birthed mm -hmm. into a standing situation. All right. All right. Now mm -hmm. it's linear for us mm -hmm. because we begin somewhere. Yes. And we we are going into infinity with God. But mm. for God, there is no beginning, there's no end, because that's who He is. This is yeah. this is it. Is okay. eternally the same. This is it. Yes. This is it. Yeah. So what we have, what we call life is basically the life of God extended to us. Mm. But the devil doesn't want them to sit in a session and yeah. discuss these matters openly and bring the truth out. He doesn't want the truth brought out because he has been hiding in the system, strangling the work of God financially. Mm. He doesn't want the books opened and examined. Brethren, what have we been doing with the money? He doesn't want that. He wants a lot of secrecy and uh -huh. uh, conniving uh -huh. and caucusing. Uh -huh. uh -huh. and, but the funny thing is, we have millions of friends or dollars to fight court cases, but we don't have money for evangelism. But you remember, like I said to you before, mm -hmm. this is a family thing. Mm -hmm. God is saying, let's fix our relationships before we apply power. Yeah. Let's fix the relationship. Mm -hmm. This whole thing is about, let's fix the relationships. Yeah. So, so, let's look at the our situation in this country, mm. for example. Mm. We have Zulus, we have Kosas, we have Pedis, we With have Swanas, we have everybody. Mm -hmm. You're not going to fix anything until these people love one another. How does God judge the world? <laughs> the law. 
that door which was opened. Yes, to John. they must understand the standard has yeah. not changed. It's still there. There are ten commandments still there. Yeah. In yeah. the ark. Yeah. You understand? And and this history, let's look at the things that are in the ark, for example. Mm -hmm. You have the ten commandments. Yes. But you have Aaron's rod. Mm -hmm. And that then you have the pot of manna. Yes. What does the pot of manna symbolize? The history of God's people. Mm. And this, his providence. This, and his providence. But this, this religion has a history. It yes. is a post of manner to show the just mm. shall live by faith. I hope you enjoyed the little clips that we um, came up with. We're going to be showing more of that um, for this particular uh, for this particular bittersweet moment, mm -hmm. uh, bittersweet show. Um, I think the whole idea behind it is. Uh, um, uh, Elder Masashere has been part of Melvi for a very long time. Mm -hmm. He's been with us. He has uh, come to the studio in and out as he pleases. He has sent recordings. He has yeah. done all of that. And so we, 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 we really, really, we, we are sad at this particular moment. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why we are, we are doing all of this. Uh, but m m more so is his legacy must still live, uh, must still live on why yeah. we record why people come in and, and leave Melvis to record and keep memories and also mm. send the message and, and send a, a divine voice out of Africa. Absolutely. So, Uncle Mel, yes. um, when did you start working with this man? So you you see him in your uni days, mm. um, you had no idea that you're gonna work with him, uh, yeah. granted. Yeah. Um, at what point, uh, did you then meet and when did you meet and what then transpired after that for him to come yeah. to the studio? It's, it's very difficult for me to recall the exact time, but there were many moments. Okay. But I think what I picked up was that he was watching Melvi from a distance. Mm. He knew what we were doing. And I think he was praying for us. Mm. Um, the real time when I remember him really calling me into his presence was the time when Isambolo went down. Yes. And then he, he went and worked with um, or was assisting uh, the new channel Life Destiny. Yes, yes. It's one of the new online uh, satellite broadcasting mm. houses we have. Mm. You can check them on YouTube. They're doing fantastic work. Mm. So he, I think he helped them as one of their operations yes, or senior think tank or I'm not quite sure what his role was but at that time we were also discussing collaborations with them and um, there were a little bit of issues around uh, who does what where with who you know ministry is good but sometimes it's got its back mm, challenges mm, 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 mm. he stepped out and called me for a meeting we sat in Irene for almost two hours, mm. him trying to explain to me what he thinks Melvi should be doing and how we should be working with other uh, collaborators. But I think also he wanted to hear my mind on, on certain issues. So we talked for two hours. Mm. And in those two hours, I recall his passion for God, to know God, and to let God be known. Mm. And the fact that we have no time, and the fact that we need to do what we have to do urgently, and that we should not close any doors, but should actually be opening many doors for many other people. So. I think his famous statement was, uh, sorry, now, now that you're saying there's no time, uh, yeah. he, would, he would always say it in, uh, in Shona, mm. uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and yeah. direct translation is, let us work. We don't have the luxury. We don't have time. We don't have, exactly, we don't the have the luxury, luxury of to, time. to dilly dally and not talk about God and uh, yeah. And Jesus coming back again, you know, yeah. and we should be ready. So uh, out of that meeting, we went our way. Um, he then, I think, left Life Destiny and he went to the U.S. Mm. But before he left for the U.S., he phoned me and says, Ndalambi, we need to start working. 
I would like to ask if you guys are available. Uh, whenever I have preachings, whenever I have events that I'm talking at, would you guys be available to capture some of that content? Oh. And I said, you don't even have to ask. It's, it's, a, it's a given. You are part of us, and if God has called you to it, and has given you a message, this is the divine voice out of Africa, oh. and we'll be privileged to work with you. So we did, we, unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of times or opportunities, but we had two opportunities. Uh, one at St. Haven, there's a sermon we actually have there, a woman who troubled Jesus for 6,000 years. Mm. He was talking about the church and its troubles with God and what the church needs to do. Then he came to Sunnyside. If you listen to Sunnyside Church, yes. so we recorded his divine yes, service yes, and his yes, Vespas yes, message. Yes, 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 I remember. So those are the two opportunities we got. And then he went to the U.S., but we kept in touch. He kept sending us audios. He kept saying, save these and I said, now you're becoming like your sister. Because when my Jeremiah died, the family then entrusted us with some of her sermons, mm. audio preachings and the like. And I said, you and you and your sister now archiving mm. stuff. <laughs> but I can tell you, that was the beginning of our collaboration. Mm. So he would send us some audios. We would look at it and maybe work on it and edit and send it out. It's and, not weird. I'm yeah. um, sorry, just, um, just while you're there. Mm -hmm. Life is funny. Uh, when you now then reflect on what was transpiring the whole time, yeah. you know, you said it in a jokey way, uh, but, uh, you know, God was just literally saying, send, send, send. Yeah. Let's keep them. Send, send, and exactly. keep them. You know? Uh, exactly. It's like... Now he, when you reflect, like, actually, was this God's plan? <laughs> in fact, let me tell you this. When he came back, I had a conversation I know was spirit filled oh. and I felt him and I knew we may not have him for long. He phoned me and says, Vandalambi, let's pray. Oh. There's something I want to talk to you about. So he prays on the phone. I was sitting on my workstation. Um, I, I remember that prayer. God help us. We are weak. We don't have what we need to have. And we are sorry we have lost a lot of time. Sure. Help us what we're discussing now that it may be successful. Amen. And I said, yes, Father, talk to me. Friends. I've got materials I really want to share with the world. And I said, what type of materials? He says, look, it's everything that I've worked on for many years. But I want uh, these top three to be our first presentation. So I said, what is it? He says, the everlasting gospel. gospel. Uh, and I said, yeah, sounds like present truth. Then he says, we want to talk about the righteousness of God, oh. the holiness of God. And thirdly, we want to look at prophecy again. Let's investigate. Let's not be afraid to investigate prophecy again and understand and it for find our out, time. Yes, for our time. Yeah. So that was the conversation I had. And when he was talking, let me tell you this, Jabs, I... I felt it in my spirit and I knew we may not have the old man for long. Oh. It goes back to my experiences with Pastor Michael Chigogora. Again, same, 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 experience. same, same script, same script. But unfortunately for Michael, we didn't record anything. We we're not even able to have these cameras. Did, did you manage to do a few clips on the righteousness of God and the everlasting gospel? So here is something that's fascinating. Okay. So since he came back and uh, he's in Cape Town, I'm in Pretoria. Mm. So there's two hours flight mm. distance, mm. 1,400 mm. kilometers apart. Mm. But he would finance himself as a retired man, finance his flights once every month mm. to fly from Cape Town to be Come here. On. So pick him up from the train or from the airport. Come here. You would sit right here. For those who watch the series we've yeah. recorded, you'll be yeah. right here. Yeah. We record and he flies back. So we did that 19 times just in the last 11 months actually 10 months i would say 19 times and we finished the first episode or the first series which is the everlasting, everlasting gospel. gospel so we have 12 episodes 
I mean, Jabs, what else do you want to record? If yeah, you've yeah, recorded yeah. the gospel honestly of Christ, speaking, honestly what else speaking, is there to be recorded? Honestly speaking. But then for the righteousness by faith, we unfortunately couldn't finish it. We only recorded seven episodes. But the, 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 that's what God designed it to be like. Yeah. You know, so. So we've got seven episodes, four that are, uh, right as we record right now, we have three that are out. The very last ones we recorded um, before he met his unfortunate accident with the car accident. We recorded it, he flew back to Cape Town, and then the next day he had this accident and he was bedridden until the time he, he, rested. he rested. So we've got four that are still in the archives. And so if you look back then, that's about 22 videos of him. In 10 months. Well, this is like since the time he made himself available yeah, to the so ministry. Since the conversation. The conversation started, I would say, I would say maybe in the last three years. Mm. Yeah, the last three years from 2018, 1920 and 2021. Just this period, we did about 22 sermons. That number is magical. Oof. You know why? Why? Talk to me. I, I know you and numbers. He <laughs> <laughs> was born on the 22nd of June. Yes. Yes. That's two, two. Mm -hmm. He died on the 2nd of November. Mm. That's number a two. two. If you had to write November in numbers, that's one, one. Mm. Again, that's two. Two. In 2021. That's more two, two. two. All right. Uh, and buried on the 12th of that's, November. That's number two. That's number two. How many messages did we do with him at Melvin? 22. 22. So what is the message? Double. So the point is he had a double portion of the spirit. The man was driven. That's the word I could use. He was more than passionate, more than motivated. He was driven. This man and numbers, <laughs> viewers, you could easily say these are conspiracy theories. <laughs> You're right. But God conspired. But guess what? It makes birth. sense. I love it. I love the breakdown. <laughs> uh, we grieve differently. <laughs> and we come for the different. <laughs> you know, th no, that, but listen that, to that this is very now. profound. But listen actually, to this. So, so that's I, interesting. <laughs> so I talked to Nziki, uh -huh. Nziki Kote, one of our. Uh, resource persons. Yeah, yeah. And I said, Ziggy, look at these numbers. This is what we did with the old men. She's like, wow. I was talking to comments and comments said we must ask for the double portion, portion of, the of the spirit. And I said, they are the numbers. There you go. That's, two, that's number two. <laughs> While we are on there, okay, we, we are going to have uh, maybe, maybe three, four double portions yeah. of beautiful sermon snippets. Yeah. What, do you, what yeah. he has come up with yes. uh, in the last uh, three, four, five years. Yeah. Uh, please enjoy the couple of uh, clips that are coming in. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the double measure yes. that's coming. Of the spirit. <laughs> yes. Now you would think that human beings are the only ones that get into trouble because of their women. No. God himself is in trouble because of his woman. The church. For God so loved. Problem already. Because how do you separate somebody from something they love? Because whatever you love is the meaning of your life. Without it, you have no life. And so God loves the church. Without the church, God has no life. So greater love has no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now there are things to watch as we go towards the end of time. The one thing we must watch is division, like I've mentioned here. The one who is right must not create a ruckus. The one who is right must demonstrate the patience of the saints and wait for God to vindicate him. Because God will vindicate you. They can take you, my brother, and throw you in the well. Are you listening? They can take you and sell you to the Ishmaelites. They can lie against you in Egypt, throw you in the prison. But everything they do will bring you to the throne one day. 
You can afford to wait on the Lord. Don't create rebellion in church and a ruckus in church because your righteousness becomes wrong when you behave badly. Ellen White says, bear in mind that none can bear an argument, mm -hmm. can survive an argument with Satan, mm -hmm. except God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. don't think you're going to go there and reason with him. Yeah. You'll get swept away. Yeah. And, and, and this is something that maybe we need to tell young people especially. Please, let's do that. Know your Bible. Mm. Don't try to reason with darkness, mm. with people that don't know God. Okay. Because they are under the control of Satan. You're going to end up in witchcraft before you know it. Okay. You're going to end up in spiritualism before you know it. You're going to wind up in darkness and trouble before mm -hmm. you know it. Mm -hmm. So you don't, Ellen White talks about it, he says, we must stay away from the enchanted ground. Mm -hmm. So let me come back to the issue of the righteousness of God. Yeah. <clears throat> the kingdom of God is supposed to be built on righteousness and mercy. That has always been the claim of God, justice. Mm -hmm. And mercy. and mercy, yeah. So he must be proved then to be mm. just. And mm. yet, the justifier of the ungodly, mm. which is the mercy component of mm. this thing. Understand, I said to you, the gospel is the thought of God, this mm. high. Mm. high and broad and deep. deep. The Apostle Paul says we need yeah. to know the length, the, length, the breadth, breadth, the and height. The width. Exactly. Yes, so and the, the, depth. The, the gospel is the kingdom of God in terms of the thought of oh God. God. We are being brought to it. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Mm -hmm. Apples, yeah. thought of God. Bananas, thought That's of God. So Pomegranate, thought of God. Wow. Skies, thought of God. Ground nuts. Ground nuts, thought of God. Nuts on the trees. Thought of God. Flowers, thought thoughts of, God. of God. So the question is, how big are, are the thoughts? thoughts of God? And they are all good. Now you are brought into that, which is the life of God. And Jesus says, I has not seen ears. I has not, not seen, seen ears, ears not, not heard. heard. You understand? Yeah. You are being brought into this. This greatness. And that's your life. And that's the gospel. And that's the gospel. That's the kingdom. <laughs> you see. I'm not sure if I can, my small brain can house that. You know? Yeah, but the life of God, you see. You know why I'm saying yeah, that? Yes, okay. We are mortal. Yes. We, the thought I have is we, we came into a world that was already moving. Right. And we are only given this short lifespan to participate mm -hmm. in the eternal plans of God. Right. So how do you even break that down into someone who's listening to say this is the actual gospel yeah well you maybe you begin with yourself it's easier that way yeah because you are the thought of god and the bible says you are fearful and wonderfully what made made but that's somebody's mind okay okay uh you go and you get uh food uh, from mm -hmm. the tree yeah beautiful mango yeah my wife loves mangoes right so do my yeah, well, there you go yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and and so that mango is the thought of god not only did god make the mango he gave you the capacity ability to enjoy it wow that is somebody's thought okay and that thought is big that's yeah. the size of the thinking of God. Yeah, and it's high. Where you yeah. want to destroy your enemies, says the higher thought is, let's love them. Mm. Mm. Okay. So the lower thought it's, is it's, hatred. Is hatred, <laughs> let's kill him. That's, that's low level thinking. Wow. The high thinking is, why kill him? You can win him. Yeah. Wow. And transform him. And the power is there. Wow. We can, we, 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 we can we, do this. You thing. won't recognize this thing yeah. when we are done. Yeah. That's the whole point of us wow. being subject to the grace of God. God says, don't throw it away. Don't throw them away. Leave it. I can fix them. Yeah. Whosoever will come, yeah. Yeah. I can fix this. Yeah. So we are receiving the righteousness of God, compliments of the power of God and the faith of God that he can fix his own thing. Mm. Okay. Mm. So the gospel is the thought of God, yeah. which is high, broad. And, and so you can, that kind of person, you yeah. can fit in there. He can yeah. take care of all your problems and yeah. my problems. Yeah. 
You understand? And the world's problems. Because the, the thought is there, the capacity to think beyond our problems. And conceive, it's, conceptualize, and, and, and bring it into being. Exactly. And, yeah. and resolve it. The capacity yeah. is there. Yeah. 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 So, so there is no need for despair. Yeah. Think of any problem. The capacity is there. Mm. Is it the waves and the seas? I'll talk to them. Is I it quiet? I, oh, I just talk. Just a conversation. Behave. Wow. You know. Is it the, the sun? The, is it the, the sun? The stars, the moon? Yeah. What's the environmental problem? problems? Just talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Live the thing. Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Is the it Bible? the wars of nations? Exactly. Is it evil spirits? Talk to me. You understand? Yeah. Whatever it is, you just talk to me. So yeah. the capacity is there to solve any problem. Mm. The reason we have these problems mm -hmm. and these disastrous solutions yeah. is because people don't want to avail oh. themselves yes. of God. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the last um, uh, seminar about the mango. I really yeah. hope you knew. I think, uh, yes. Kamel, break it down a bit further <laughs> than uh, what, uh, what, uh, what Uncle just was just speaking about yeah well, what I, was the interpretation on that i think for me because of the series that we had lined up mm. the first one was really what was in his heart mm. the fact that the everlasting gospel has always been god's idea mm. and the thought so when god says let's create man in our own likeness that was the gospel mm. that was the good news mm. And I like the example he gave of the mango tree, mm. where he says Love the mango it. tree, when you taste that mango, it's the everlasting gospel. Mm. That's the goodness of God. Because that mango prepared that sweetness for you. Mm. Mm. It's not for itself. Mm -mm. It's for you. Because the mango doesn't eat itself, you know. Yes. God has prepared Christ for you. To be enjoyed by you. Mm. So God's idea of the everlasting gospel is he's a giver. He's not a taker. So while we may have lost him now, according to God's plan, he's not lost. True. God has given through his messages now to the universe. You know, I always say this in Jabs. Um, when God raised Melvi, it was as if though he's raised us so that once we record someone, they are ready to die. Sure. Because you mustn't go with what God has given you. Leave it to us. Leave then it we for can the sit living. Down. Yes. So while he's gone, his legacy and his message still lives on. Will continue. You literally can go on YouTube. Yes. Mel V. Uh, slash Boom! It pops up. He will speak to you like he's alive. In fact, I can tell you this: many people will be converted until Jesus After. comes while he's dead. So I, I believe... While you're on there, sorry, yeah. um, obviously I'm, 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 uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm employed for this. And uh, while <laughs> you're still watching, if you haven't subscribed, yes. please press the subscribe button. Absolutely. Press the like button. Yeah. Do what you need to do uh, to mm -hmm. be part of the Melvi family. Yeah. Anyway, moving right yes. along. <laughs> so, so the point I wanted to make was that the vision of Melvi mm. is practical. It's irrelevant. It's for such a time as this. We shouldn't lose preachers and they go with everything that mm, God has given them. Mm. So we are left with two series on what I consider present truth on the everlasting gospel, which is God's thought over humanity. What is his idea about us? And man, it's deep. Too deep. It's deep. It, it's not just Calvary. It's bigger than Calvary. It's not just the second coming. It's bigger than the second coming. Everlasting. It's about us being in the presence of God mm. and not being consumed. Mm. Hell is the absence of God. Mm. And the presence of God in our lives, covered by grace and mercy, is the gospel of God. So we, we have that series. We have the... Righteousness of God. Again, getting to know God much better. better. Who not he not is. the preconceived ideas. Not, not the, the superficial. Not, not what, what, what people 
think about God, yeah. what people think they know about God. Yeah. Because the moment you say, I know God, then uh, you yeah. don't know him. Because I was speaking to his son, Daniel, mm. uh, and he was telling me his God. statement was, know God to let God be known. Mm. That was his whole mantra. And I think he taught his family around that to say, you know, know God and let him be known. Yeah. So I think for me, that's where I really thank God I have seen with my own eyes what this ministry is about. And Elder Masoshere rests, leaving me with the comfort. And I know the prayers he prayed, kneeling right here. Yeah. And I was kneeling right there after every set. I have one of those prayers actually recorded. I think we can even play it now if we can. It's just an audio of his prayer for what we had done, praying for Melvi as a ministry, because he really believed in what we are called to do. He came in to put a spotlight for me to see the greater picture of what this ministry is about. And his death has preached exactly that. Mercy, mercy. Um, I think maybe... Even in conclusion, yeah. um, Uncle Mel, um, I'm, I'm going to ask, and I need, I need one, I need one mm-hmm. statement. His key message in probably three points. Okay, I know you, we spoke about the everlasting gospel. Yeah. But what was um, his his core uh, um, sermons in a nutshell? His core sermons in a nutshell. Uh, they all sounded like the same. Mm. Um, but he had a mission and he knew exactly what must be done. Yeah. In one statement, please say that. The second, uh, the second one would be, I think, what are your words mm-hmm. um, of conclusion yeah. um, about, um, about, uh, about Elder Maxoshe? Let me start with the last one. Yeah. Um, his life is not yet concluded. Mm. Mm. He's just rested. You don't say the match is over at half time when you are resting. I think there's the next phase of our life with him when Christ shall have come. Hallelujah. And we shall be reunited again. Hallelujah. That is the hope we have. Hallelujah. That death is just but asleep. Just like Jesus went to awake Lazarus, he's coming again and our dead shall live again. So I have that hope that his life this is just a segment of his life because we are created to be eternal yeah and we have eternal life so i think we will miss him uh, while we are in this phase this side of this side of heaven yes mm-hmm. this side of heaven we definitely shall miss him but we will be comforted when we watch him Hallelujah. and when we listen to him speaking to us and he has hundreds of audios The videos we did are just the tip of the iceberg of the greatness of the man. What was his message? Uh, I think for me, I would classify it as a revelation of Jesus Christ for the postmodern age. Hallelujah. He tried to make Christ as relevant and practical and the only thing that a man must pursue you have no business doing anything else but glorifying God, letting his glory be known, and leaving a legacy that says only God is everything. The yeah. verse I remember a lot from our um, series was Romans. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. gospel of Christ. For it is the power mm. of God unto salvation. salvation for the Jew first. So he was big on that Romans 1, One. verse 16 and 17. That is the message I remember from the elder, the gospel. He was not ashamed. He stood for it mm. for over four decades. All he did was to preach and to teach. That's it. That's it. That's so it. for me, I sat here where you are sitting for 11 months. Uh, milking, milking the men, being blessed, interrogating, and I'll miss that. I pray that God replaces him with himself, oh. or perhaps another uh, uh, human being who would feel 
the space in their own direction because I don't think he's replaceable. Yeah. Can't replace that quality. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sobering moment when you actually realize that, uh, like you're saying, you can't replace him. He's not going to walk in here yeah. and uh, be bubbly. and uh, Yes. And then when it's now time to record, the yeah. man switches up and divine, the spirit just... Yeah. He just takes over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's sad. Uh, it's, a, a funny it's, moment, yeah. maybe, as we, as we end. Um, so, so we used to have this funny moment. Whenever mm. I would start a series, mm. he would be so, so... Completely as if... <laughs> like, like he's scared to speak. And I'll say, stand by, stand by, cut, cut. Elder, you need to speak up. <laughs> but not that he was quiet. Uh -uh. He spoke up so radically so clearly so concisely about where the church is missing it mm, mm. and what needs to be done for such a time as this yeah he, the the man the man read a lot yeah the man prayed a lot you know it's funny that you're saying sober when he's starting it's so soft yes and then he, even you know even even during a divine service uh, yeah you know when uh, preachers think come in yeah you think he's a boring guy, guy. Yeah. he starts uh, <laughs> and then let him start preaching. Yes. Then you hear what comes out of that mouth. Exactly. So it, he actually was so it was he was crazy. so blunt with yeah, the truth. Extremely that blunt. In one of his messages we recorded at Sinicide, you will actually see in terms of viewers it's less because we didn't publish it. Then he says, Ah, this one I put it aside, it was just for us internally. It's gonna get me into trouble with the church. <laughs> because he was just hitting it. Yeah. He was just eating. And the it. truth, the um, yeah. conversations that people don't want to talk about. He yeah. he was not ashamed to talk about those, no, no. Uh, those conversations. The gospel. Yeah. And the gospel of Christ. So yeah. I'll miss that man. Yeah, it will. we will. We will. Um, from myself, Melvi Tox and Jabs, um, I think I will leave you with yeah. these words. Know God and let him be known. Mm. Thank you, sir, for yes. sharing your heart for talking about it, uh, talking uh, about how you feel and the experience mm -hmm. you've had with uh, Elder. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, may we be blessed. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget, press that subscribe button mm -hmm. and let us pray for his family as they're going through a tough time. Mm. God bless you. Amen.